And maybe it's doing a, an evaluation of where your market is and saying, okay, what are we missing? And is that something that I can fill? And can I fill it well? Um, and just try it out. Just shotgun method, just find an opportunity and shoot and see if it sticks. So the question is this, how do most agents find the secrets to succeed in today's competitive real estate market, especially when the top agents are keeping those secrets to themselves? That's the question, and this podcast will give you the answer. Hi, I'm Aaron Amuchastegui, and welcome to Real Estate Rockstars. Real Estate Rockstars, welcome back. Today, I'm interviewing Sarah Allen from Prescott, Arizona. She's with Keller Williams out there, her fourth year of real estate and already doing a ton of volume. And she's got a great story. I know there's a lot of stuff in here that's going to help so many listeners. So let's get started. Sarah, how are you? I'm fantastic. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Yeah, I'm glad you could make it. What's it like in Prescott, Arizona right now? Uh, it's absolutely beautiful. We've yeah. had some snow recently, but uh, it melts quickly. So now we're at about mid 60s, I want to say. You've had some snow recently. Is that no is that every yes. year type thing? It is, is every like year. Okay. We're actually a, a mile high city. A lot of people don't realize that, but in central Arizona, we're as high as Denver. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize that. So mm -hmm. the I know there's I, I was thinking like Arizona must be some sort of a weird, you know, freeze right now for that to happen. But you're like, no, it's uh but now you're in 60 degrees, so it's still golf weather for the people that want to go out there as long as the snow melted off. Yes, it is. It is. And we do have some really nice golf courses here. What was it like over the last year during like shutdowns and things like that in, in COVID? What was real estate like from like March last year through the end of the year? It was different, although it was my most productive year. Um, I would say the biggest setback was just the local businesses that had to shut down. And that was very sad because our, our town is very relationship based and we really depend on a lot of our market going to those businesses and supporting them. So from a person who does that, I was a little sad informed for them. From the real estate standpoint, we had a lot of relocation clients. It was still very active. Yes, we had to follow COVID guidelines, but again, it was my busiest year yet. Yeah. Very cool. So the, so have you always been, when you started in real estate four years ago, did you start in Prescott? I did. Yeah. I, I, uh, I started as I was a single mom when I went into real estate and we had just moved to Prescott and I thought I'm going to start a career in real estate that is relationship based. And you have to know the town, even though I've lived here for six months. Uh, but it was a great decision and um, I've loved it so far. So you moved to a new town. You'd been there for six months. You were just getting started in real estate. What yes. made you want to get into real estate? Uh, you know, I honestly wanted to feel a sense of accomplishment for Sarah, not just for mom and wife. And I thought real estate was something that would give me the flexibility to still be a mom, um, but also give me a purpose for myself. And uh, shortly after getting into real estate, I realized that it's not a flexible schedule. <laughs> you know, if yeah. you really want to make it, you have to you know, grind, um, which is my personality. But uh, my parents were real estate agents. Um, so I got to see their lifestyle. Again, that was after I moved out of college, but so I saw the glamour side of it, you know, them having mm -hmm. a good time with it. Um, but I just thought it was a great opportunity and I really wanted to try it. Yeah, it really can be the, I mean, you still get to be your own boss. You have more control yes. than if you're working a nine to five somewhere yeah. else, but the, but there are so many decisions to make of, do I take this call or not? Right. Or do I take this, do I go do this meeting or not? Mm -hmm. It's definitely not necessarily working less, but it is, uh, but it is getting to work for yourself. The, it uh, is. it's like the entrepreneurial side of that. So what is your, what is your, uh, do you have a daughter or you have a son? I do. I have both. I have a two-year-old son and a five-year-old daughter. Holy cow. That's like hitting the jackpot. You get a, <laughs> we get one boy, one girl. So yes. The, so now they're getting to see mom work a little bit, but the, you'll get to know, you'll get to see more of that in the, in a few years of, of yeah. the impact that you're getting to make as, as that leader of your family. So, um, what was your, how'd you get your first deal? So back to four years ago, you're new, you're six months in. How did you start marketing yourself to get your first transaction? Honestly, I really took into account what my teacher was saying during real estate school, which was presenting yourself as a business and introducing yourself as a business to your sphere of influence and the database you already have. So my first step was to start calling people that I know, posting on social media and saying, I am in real estate. I just started a brand new business. I would love your support. I would love the opportunity to work with you and prove myself in this industry. And I was 
really shocked at the return I got from, from doing that um, and showing that professionalism right from the start and also being true to myself by reaching out to my database and saying, you know me, you trust me already. Um, trust me with this. Let me prove myself in, in that realm. I also joined a team rather quickly. So that was a great opportunity for me to learn and also get some leads in, get some experience um, and just follow kind of an everyday list of what a, a real estate agent should do. So I'm, I'm very blessed that I was given that opportunity as well. Yeah. So your first transaction, were you a buyer's buyer side? Yes. And I have remained a buyer side. I'm a very, I, w- I don't want to say emotional, but I do love the emotion of a buyer because they are so excited to buy a home. They're so excited to get into it and see where these memories are going to be made. Um, and seeing that in a buyer is something that really gives me passion and gives me purpose. So I've stuck, I've stuck with being a buyer's agent. Um, I'd like to transition into a little bit more listings as well as, as everyone does in our market right now. But uh, I, I do love buyers. Yeah. Yeah, that's is uh, the the emotional the excitement of a buyer is so unique. The because yeah. You know, yeah, when you get to buy a house, everybody's so excited. I recently yes. sold a house that we owned out in California that we lived in with my family for ten years, and it was it was such a mixed bag of emotions. It was like happiness and and tears and all sorts of things. The there were there were very few moments of like excitement. It was more like oh, the memories we had here. And so the memories we're going to have here. And I could see yeah. you really, you know, jumping in on that and how uh, and, and how much of an impact that would be uh, for you and a difference. So the, what did you, what was, what, what did you learn during your first transaction? Was it, did it go the way it wanted to? Did you have good, co- good coaches? How did that, what was that process like? I, I did not have a coach at that time. Um, and I wasn't on the team when I did have my first transaction. And I remember Uh, showing the house, getting under contract with my client. And then um, probably about three quarters of the way through is when I admitted that it had been my first transaction Mm -hmm. (laughs) and they were just shocked by it. They thought I was a seasoned agent. So that made me feel really fantastic. I'm, you know, I'm I'm going, I'm, I'm winging it here and you're thinking I'm a seasoned agent. Um, so that, that was a great experience. I would say that it was, I was nervous and also everything I learned in real estate school just went right out the window. I was like, how do I open a lockbox? Is anyone going to show me how to like book an appointment for a show? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, you didn't learn a lot of the real life situations that you deal with in real estate. Yeah. So the, what is something you would go back and tell yourself now? Like, so now you've done a bunch of transactions, you know, a bunch mm-hmm. of volume. What was something you wish you would have known that first year when you just got started? So honestly, there's a few different things. I am very much a, I push myself to work really, really hard and I motivate myself. I'm a self-motivated person. I've played golf my whole life. So I needed to go out, practice alone, practice that mentality. So I I fall into that really well. Um, But I also fall into being a perfectionist. And I want to say, it's okay. It's okay to lose a listing. It's okay to feel burned out, to take a step back, to relax a little bit, readjust your plans, readjust your goals, um, and just keep moving forward. I guess it would be fail forward, as everyone says. Um, So that would be a really big piece of advice that I would give a new agent who's very similar to me and just wants it all right off the bat and is willing to do everything. Um, and then another piece of advice would be to really plan, set a goal, break that down into very manageable items and step-by-step processes, and then follow through with that. You really need to, you know, find a system that's going to work with your goal. You're going to follow that system to a T, and then you're going to follow up with it and make sure that you did follow that system, figure out where maybe you lacked a little bit, maybe an area that you really loved and what was the return on that and then repeat it. Yeah. Do you have a favorite system? Um, yes, it's just winging it. No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Honestly, my favorite system is just I exactly what I said, kind of that 3F system where you find a system that you really like and follow through with it and you know, execute and then follow up on whether or not you did it well enough and it was a great system. Um, I also really am a, I'm a huge goal setter and I really enjoy reaching those goals and knowing that whatever I did today or whatever I'm going to do tomorrow, put me a step closer to that end goal that I have. Um, and I would say that's probably my, my biggest system that helps me continue moving forward and continue doing the steps that I need to take, um, to, to reach whatever I'm trying to get to. Yeah. So the, 
So you got introduced to us through Broker Agent Advisor. So you're one of the, you're the seven star award recipient for Agent of the Month for the state of Arizona uh, yes. right now. And the, and Broker Agent has been sending some great, you know, some great people, some, some you know, great people that have gone through and, and have they, have they sent you your cover yet? You know, like your cover picture and your, and your headline yet? They have not. I have sent in a few options for the cover and I, you know, when they presented that to me, even being on this podcast, I'm like me, I told my husband, they want to interview me. <laughs> like, there's this little person in Prescott, Arizona, which is just a small town. Um, so I'm so thankful for the opportunity for both the award and also being on this podcast. Um, and I, you know, I, I'm trying to stay humble <laughs> with yeah. it because I'm still shocked that I've been giving the opportunity. I think you'll be so excited when you get to see your cover and, and, you know, some of the, the benefits that it brings, they do some really neat work out there. And I think clients love getting to see that. Do you have any um, any plan for how it's going to help you in your business, or where you might use the use the cover, use the recognition? So I'm I do a lot with social media. I have a strong social media presence, and having that recognition on my social media, I think, will be a huge lead generation factor for me. Definitely sending it out to past clients in my sphere of influence is going to be something that I do as well. Um, and again, we are a small town. So, you know, possibly reaching out to friends that I know that own the local magazines, just saying, hey, little old Sarah was on the cover here. I'd love to, you know, write an article about it or, you know, talk to you about it or something like that. But, uh, you know, just the, the normal grassroots marketing that you do in small towns. That sounds so cool. Real Estate Rockstars, this is a commercial break from our biggest podcast sponsor we have right now, Rent Ready. It can be fun getting a new real estate deal. But it can be tough managing your properties after the fact, especially if you're long distance investing or trying to manage multiple properties by yourself. That's why we're here to tell you about Rent Ready. Rent Ready is a property management software that not only makes it easier to manage all your real estate deals from one platform, but they also have the best customer service support in the biz. They're an all in one app that lets you easily manage properties, collect rent, list units, screen tenants, sign leases, all from your phone or computer. Imagine all of your real estate doors right in your pocket. How awesome is that? The best part is it's so affordable, one flat price for everything. Unlimited properties, tenants, and support with a real live human. And I have to add in there, that's a new business model that not a lot of people are doing. There's like this freemium model where people say, hey, you can try this, but as soon as you grow, it's gonna cost you a lot of money. Or they kind of punish you when you get too many emails on your list or too many comments. They aren't gonna punish you when you grow. They're not gonna charge you more when you get 10, 20, 30 rentals. They're gonna charge you the same when you have two or three as they will when you have 50 or 60. So you have a nice fixed cost, all software, all in one place. Check it out, Rent Ready, R-E-N-T-R-E-D-I.com. And if that's not enough, Rent Ready is giving our listeners a special code you can use to get a whole year of Rent Ready for just $54. Use code R-O-C-K-S-T-A-R-50, that's Rockstar50, and sign up for Rent Ready's annual plan at rentready.com. Again, R-E-N-T-R-E-D-I.com with code Rockstar50 to get Rent Ready for only $54. So the, so last year, how many, what was your volume like? So I did 24 transactions, 25 sides. I represented one listing with both buyer and seller. Um, I did a little over $6.3 million in sales volume and about $163,000 in GCI. All right. So then what's, and what's the average sales price out there? Average sales price is, well, last year for me, it was right around $339,000. I'm bumping that up because our market is so strong right now. So I'm probably going to be around 400,000. All right. And so the, and I think at the beginning, you said you were a solo agent. Yes. Now, are you on a team or are you? St- no, I'm, okay. I'm still a solo agent. So right at the beginning, I was a solo agent for about three months and I already had three under contract at that time. And I was approached by a really big team here and they said, we'd love to have you on the team. This is where we think you can go with it. So I decided to join the team. Um, I stuck with them until the end of 2018, beginning of 2019, when I branched off as a solo agent with the idea of making my own team. At this point, I don't think I'm going to do that because I do enjoy being a solo agent and I'm at the point where I can handle everything that's coming my way. Um, and I'm, I'm really truly enjoying being a, a solo agent. And I did enjoy being a team as well. I don't want to say that being on a team is a bad thing. There's so many pros to it. Yeah. What are some of the pros and cons of, of team versus solo agent that you figured out? So I would say a major pro of being on a team is that 
although you have a commission split, which a lot of people say is a con, you don't have to pay for a lot of things out of pocket. So a lot of marketing material, lock boxes, signs, business cards, photos. Um, you have a built-in transaction coordinator. You have a built-in coach with a team leader, depending on the team that you join. So a lot of these additional expenses that you would have to take on as a solo agent aren't there, which gives you the opportunity to truly, truly um, lead generate and truly do what you need to do as an agent, because all that back office stuff is taken care of. One of the biggest cons that I hear is commission split. But if you really break down the cost of doing that as a sole agent, agent and the commission split, it's, it's right about the same. Um, I also think it depends on where you want to go in your real estate career. I had a different direction and that's why I became a solo agent and I am happy with that decision. Um, I have a little bit more say in what I want to do, not a little bit. It's just me. So I have a lot more say in how I want to run things, how I want to do things and handle things what systems I want to follow, um, you know, what, what back office systems I want to do with, you know, website design or CRMs. I get to have that opportunity to use my own. So that would be a huge plus as well. Yeah. How do you get all your, how, how do you get clients now? So for the past two years that I have been a solo agent, I heavily depended on Zillow for premier agents. Um, I am now not doing that. Um, I did have a great time when I was with them. I don't want to say anything negative about that, but I do feel like I can really work on my database. And I think the biggest thing was realizing how much money I was leaving on the table by not focusing on my database and my sphere of influence as my top priority. And those are majority of them are free leads. It's reaching out to them, following up with them, sending them a card here and there, um, going that extra mile, which is something I love to do, and, and really seeing that return on the investment that you're giving to the people you already know. So that is my number one lead source. I also do a lot of agent-to-agent -agent referrals, which is why I have a strong social media presence. Um, that's a way for agents to actually find out who I am and see, see what I'm doing. Um, and, uh, so sphere of influence database, agent to agent referrals. Um, and I would say those are my top two. So your first few years, did you do a bunch of ads? So it was Zillow premier. Was that your primary, you know, lead it was, for a while? yeah, it, it was my, for the, actually, I would say not when I first started, when I first started as a solo agent. Yes. Um, I had a lot of team leads when I was on the team and then I switched to solo agent and, um, it almost felt like I was starting from square one again. So I, I said, okay, well, what's, what do I hear being the number one lead source? And that was Zillow at the time. And it's good golly, did they charge quite a bit of money for those premier leads. Um, but again, they were, they were very profitable for me. I had a very good return on them, but that profit margin was getting smaller and smaller based on the amount of leads I was getting for the cost of them. So even though I was, um, I had a great profit margin, it wasn't as much as I really wanted. So I thought, okay, I really need to readjust how I think things and how I do things. Um, again, that's following up, seeing what system really works for you. And if that's set with the goal that you have in mind. And I said, okay, I'm going to change things up and really focus on the people who do know me and trust me and want to work with me or who have worked with me already. Yeah. I think that's a, it's kind of a great blueprint for somebody as they're getting started, right? At the beginning, you're going to need help to get extra leads. So you can go, you can reach out to your database. You can reach out to the people, you know, and start telling them you're an agent. But then you can, you know, pay for leads through advertising or through like Zillow or OpCity or some of those services that really kind of hand them to you. You get to start making some money and mm -hmm. um, and learning that process. But now you're saying, but now it's been three to four years. You've done a lot more transactions. So now you can reach out to those people, ask for their right. contacts. Now you've been in real estate for a long time and you've been networking. Now your sphere is much larger. So you're at a point mm -hmm. where you're saying, okay, I've, you've been paying for your leads, which is really helpful, but you've left instead of having a team lead, right? Or instead, instead mm -hmm. of paying somebody else your bigger commission, you're paying somebody right. else for that. Now mm -hmm. you're at the point like, all right, you've built this business and now you're going to go full bore off of the, the leads essentially that you've right. created. What, are you, what have you done so far in, in 2021 for transactions? You got any closings yet? I have. So I have eight closed and pending as of right now. I have two more closings next week. Um, so I, I'm set to complete the goals that I wanted to complete, which was close to 40 transactions this year. However, speaking with my coach, we have readjusted that to doing 50 transactions, which is wild to me because that's double what I did in 2020. Right. So steps. last year you did 24, right? <laughs> yeah. It was your yeah. biggest year. And so it now you're like, already, you already yes. have eight. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, of course I did last year, I did have at that time a, a one-year-old, two-year-old, you know, and a, a four and five-year-old kind of age group. Um, so it was a little bit more difficult because my son was at home with me all the time. And so was my daughter. 
Um, I'm not using them as an excuse in any way, again, because it was my best year yet, but I, I, I didn't allow myself the opportunity to really sit down and time block and um, lead generate like I wanted to do. Um, and I'm happy, so happy that I actually didn't do that because I got the opportunity to really bond with my kids in a way that I haven't done <laughs> in a little while. Yeah. Um, so that was, that was a great opportunity that I want to say that opportunity cost. I'm glad I went the other way this year. On the other hand, my son's in daycare, my daughter's back in school and I am ready. <laughs> You're I'm ready, ready to rock 2020. Yeah, you're ready to hit 50, 50 <laughs> transactions. I think you're definitely yes. well on your way. So what's your favorite social media, you know, version right now? Instagram, Facebook, YouTube? So right now I am huge on Instagram. However, I'm really trying to grow my YouTube channel because I absolutely love to do video. I, I'm not sure why, but I love being in front of that camera. Um, so I'm incorporating that into my marketing strategy. I'm also doing TikTok. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Which is so funny to me because I'm going to be 32 next week and I'm like, TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm too old for that. But, um, you know, I think any, any way you can adapt to what's, what's happening around you and what the marketing trends are happening in your industry, the, the better you're going to do. So I'm all about adaptability and that's what I'm trying to do in my marketing strategy strategy. So, um, Instagram would be number one, YouTube, number two, TikTok number three. Awesome. So the, what's your favorite video you've done so far with YouTube? Oh boy. Uh, well, I, I have this series called Prescott Uncovered and it is going around to different business owners and chatting with them about why they chose Prescott, um, all about their business and why they love living here. And I, I really do enjoy doing those videos. Um, I did just post one. Actually, I just made one. It's coming out on Wednesday. I do something called the 928 update. Our area code is 928. And it's just little market updates um, and market trends that are happening in our area. And that one was talking about buying the ugly house. And it's we have so many buyers who say they want a turnkey property. And there's not a lot of that in Prescott. Um, but you can have a really great return on your investment if you do buy the ugly home and live in it for a few years remodel the bathroom and, you know, the kitchen, uh, the, the ones that areas that give you the most return, um, and really see your profit grow from that. So that, that was a really fun video. Yeah. Uh, YouTube is such a fun new way to market and the, you know, people talk about it as that evergreen content. So the, yeah. the longer it's out there, the better it is, right? Yeah. So you, you record mm -hmm. a video now about how to, you know, how to choose a neighborhood in Prescott or how to buy the ugly home in, in Prescott or why to buy the ugly home or how to get your offer accepted, any of that yeah. stuff. The, the more people see it, the higher it goes up. And eventually two, three, four years from now, those YouTube videos, you know, create the leads for you. It's just different than, I mean, I love Instagram. It's so fun. You get to go back and forth with people. I get to have conversations with listeners. People message me. I message them like we have full real conversations and develop friendships through there. Um, mm -hmm. But I think YouTube is also that a, a pretty, it's a really cool way to create that um, long-term evergreen content that just shows yes. that you're the, you're the authority in the space. So yeah, when did you start I doing YouTube? I started doing that um, probably last year was when I really dove right into YouTube. Another thing I wanted to bring up about YouTube is a lot of people don't realize it's the second largest search engine other than Google and Google owns YouTube. So when people are researching, their, your YouTube videos will pop up in your Google search. So it's, it's a great way to get SEO and to drive people to your message and your business. Yeah. Yeah. We've interviewed several agents that have done a really good job at kind of spelling out how to do that. And I think the, I think for anyone in real estate, I think a YouTube page is something they should be investing in, uh, especially as a specialist of their area. I think that mm -hmm. is, that's really great. So the, I've got kind of some fire round questions that we ask everybody. So one is what's, what's the number one way you survived in 2020? And that could be with business or personal, but what, what was something that that you did that really was key to thrive. Like you had your biggest year ever. What was one of your keys to surviving? I didn't stop. Um, I really tried to adapt to what was happening. And I wanted to give that message to clients that were still coming in and the clients that I did have that I was taking this seriously, um, that our market has not shifted in any way. It's gotten better specifically for sellers. Um, and that I just wanted to keep pushing myself and not be the agent that got swallowed up or be the agent that said I was going to take a little bit of time off. And then um, six months later, and you're like, what the heck happened? I did didn't have income coming in for the last, you know, four or five months. I, I just didn't want 
to do that to myself. So I really just kept going and pushing myself, changing the way I did things and the way I viewed things um, and, and kept moving forward. Another thing was just, again, spending time with my family and realizing that they are my why. That is why I went into real estate so that I could provide a life for my family. And I didn't want to keep saying, oh, well, it, it would be nice if, it would be nice if um, you got to work for it. You really have to work for it. And I don't want to be the person that said I, I didn't work for it. So that was, that was probably my biggest push in 2020. Yeah, I like that. So the, there is a plenty of reasons to say yeah, it would be nice if things were back to normal and instead, right. or it'd be nice if this was happening instead. So the, um, it might, might be the same answer, it might be different. So is there some, what's the number one thing you learned in 2020 about people or real estate or anything else? Any change in, in mindset of just the world? Um, I would say, you know, without getting too political, <laughs> Uh, I really Prescott did not see a shift like metropolitan areas did. Mm -hmm. Um, and the type of clientele that was coming here really gave me a different idea of how to market and, and what type of client is coming. So I think it was an eye opening experience to realize what type of, um, clientele enjoys Prescott in the Avapai County. Um, and also, I think I, I also learned that I, I am a hustler. I, I, and it's okay for me to say that because I did work my butt off to kind of get where I am. And 2020 was a big part of that. Yeah, you're right. There are so many places that like cities that had to be focused based on that one or another, mm -hmm. yeah. like so, so many, so many cities that the marketing had to focus on either people wanting to move there to be safer, people wanting to move there to be more open as people mm -hmm. were moving to Florida and other places, there's, there's a lot of places that, um, that the market definitely shifted, um, mm -hmm. for based on demand. And some, some were, Hey, this was a, a pro mask city. So some people wanted to move there. Other places were pro mask cities. So people wanted to move away from there and everywhere mm -hmm. else. So knowing your client and what they were looking for in 2020 probably made a big difference. One of my big lessons mm -hmm. was just the need to realizing to have a, to pivot and a backup plan. Yes. You know, to always have a backup plan. We're talking to agents about like, you know, start investing in some real estate or some rentals or in some other businesses too. So when you do have a couple months where all of a sudden it slows down, but I like yours of saying, Hey, no matter what, just keep going. Just, just yeah. don't quit, <laughs> know your market and be able to look around you to say like, how, how can I market to what's happening right yes. now? Um, mm -hmm. I, I like that. So let's see. So what about your number one way to succeed in 2021? So the, have you, is there anything you're going to do different or that you would tell agents right now, like this is what you need to do and expect this next year compared to last year? Um, I would say, you know, our, our market here in Prescott is pretty saturated with agents. Um, so it's, I would say finding your niche and really focusing on that niche and uh, marketing yourself towards it. Uh, I have decided to really dive into more video, as I mentioned earlier, and it has gotten a huge return, just even the short amount of time that I have been doing it. Um, and I just really want to focus on that because that's something our market is not doing here in Prescott. And I think it could bring a lot of value. So that's something that I'm, I personally am going to be doing. And maybe it's doing a, an evaluation of where your market is and saying, okay, what are we missing? And is that something that I can fill? And can I fill it well? Um, and just try it out. Just shotgun method. Just find an opportunity and shoot and see if it sticks. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think I think that is, is good advice. There are more agents now than there were, and there are less listings. So you got to yeah. be able to you know, find your niche, kind of get that business. People are saying, you know, how do I get my offer accepted right now? So you're a buyer's agent. You represent mm -hmm. mostly mostly buyers. The yeah. and we have people e emailing me almost daily saying, I'm writing offers. There's 20 other offers. How do I get my offer accepted? What advice would you give to somebody trying to figure out how to get their offer accepted when there's 20 other people offering on the house? So I am a huge proponent of, you know, move quickly. If you find a house that you really like, we got to be the first ones there. We have to be the first ones to submit the offer. Um, it's got to be a strong offer and you have to let your buyers know that right off the bat, we are going above asking. We're most likely waiving an appraisal um, and we are moving quickly and also communicate with the listing agent. Um, they probably get bombarded with calls, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm going to reach out to you. I'm going to let you know that I'm submitting an offer. I want to receive notification that 
you received my offer. I want you to know that I'm a buyer's agent. I work with buyers all the time. I write clean offers and then I'm going to see this through to the end. Um, you know, a, a proven track record, if you will. And, uh, you know, speaking with the lender, if it's financed, sometimes you don't have to do a waiver, waiver of appraisal in an offer because the home might already be waived from the appraisal based on what the lender says. So have those open communications, have your lender contact the listing agent, um, send a follow-up email like, hey, they're already through the underwriting process or whatever they need to do to already be a step ahead of the game. Yeah, that's great advice. I like your answers on that. So the, let's see, and then any predictions for this year? Like any, any things you think might change? Is it going to be more of the same? Do you think that uh, anything that you're seeing is going to change in Prescott? Yeah. Let me get my crystal ball here. No. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I would say, honestly, I think it's going to stay the same about the same level of craziness that's that happened in 2020. Um, it's going to continue into this year, at least in our market center. And I would say that um, we are seeing a few more listings popping up. And that's probably because we have a lot of hungry agents out there that are saying, we need to get more listings. We need to get more listings, which is fantastic. Um, I think that's, that's great, especially for buyer's agents. Um, so I am seeing a little bit of a shift in more listings coming on. I, I would consider the idea or maybe throw this out there. Um, We've heard of forbearance with loans and mortgages, and we might be coming into that time frame where that forbearance is no longer there and the, the homeowners have to pay that difference or now start paying um, and maybe they're still not in a position to do so. So that could be another reason why you're seeing more listings pop up or that you will see more listings pop up because they need to sell. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind that I've, I've kind of kept on the back burner just as, as thoughts moving forward. Yeah, I think there's, I mean, the way we'll see more supply come online is if new stuff gets built, but I also think there's going to be a, you know, I was, I was traumatized a bit back in like, uh, you know, 2007, 2008, when the world crashed and I was traumatized by like, what would happen next? And all of a sudden, but at that time, a lot of people had to adjust. Mm -hmm. People hadn't paid their mortgage for a year. It took like a year to get foreclosed on back then. Yeah. They would then lose the house in foreclosure. Mm -hmm. And then they were forced to say like, okay, now I have to downsize. So they right. could say, oh, I can get a lesser paying job and I can move into a house that's a thousand dollars a month instead of $3,000 a month. It was mm -hmm. very hard for them to do. But I, but I remember that was a, sh a, sh a shift that changed where they finally got to the point like, Hey, I can't afford it. I can move in to something smaller and do it a little bit different. One of the benefits back then was there was less expensive jobs to move into. So yeah. the, uh, so hopefully, uh, so I think that'll be the big change. I think they cannot keep pushing the forbearance back, uh, you know, right. much longer. I think mm -hmm. definitely people want to sell. The cool thing is most of those people in forbearance do have equity. It'll be like this mm -hmm. piggy bank that they get to tap. And right. so they will be looking for the agents that can help sell that. And maybe even as buyers, when buyers are out there listening, trying to figure out like, Hey, what can we, you know, there, there isn't really a list of people in forbearance, but maybe it'll be more direct <laughs> offers to people that are saying like, Hey, I, I'm thinking about listing my house. You're like, cool. I already have a buyer for that house or right. letters and things like that. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think that that's, that's, I think that that's probably a prediction that sometime this year we'll see more inventory come on from people that are realizing they need to downsize, uh, mm -hmm. to really change, you know, the Sarah, it's been great talking to you, you know, broker agent of the month for Arizona through the broker agent advisor program. I can totally see now why you got the award, why you're four <laughs> years in and, and making some big changes and so much advice Thank today you. that you gave to our listeners. Any final thoughts that you would want to tell everybody? I would say something that I didn't kind of tap into, uh, which is really important to me and that I did say I have a strong social media presence, but if you are going to go into social media and try and use that as a lead generation source for you, be authentic, be yourself, uh, be professional, obviously, but don't be afraid to show people who you are because people have to trust you to do business with you. And if they don't know who you really are, they're not going to want to do that. They're not going to want to trust you. So I would say that's authenticity is, is the number one thing that I would say, um, if you're going to dive into that, don't be afraid to, to be that person. I love that. Sarah, if people want to reach out to you, agents are going to want to reach out to you. They're going to want to ask you for advice. They're going to want to come talk to you on social media. What's yeah. the best way that they, that they should come find you? 
So I tried to make it very simple on all platforms. My Instagram handle is at Sarah Allen Realtor. You can see it right here. Yep. Um, and that's Sarah with an H. And that is pretty much streamlined across. That's my email address, Sarah at Sarah Allen Realtor.com. That is my website, Sarah Allen Realtor.com. So I tried to make it very streamlined. But if you did did go to Instagram, you would see all that information there. Um, and I will I will do my best to respond. Awesome. Well, Sarah, thank you for coming on the show. Real Estate Rockstars, thanks for listening. Thanks for having me. All right, Real Estate Rockstars, this is Aaron Muchastegui jumping in again to thank you for listening to the show. Hopefully you guys loved listening to that one. And I wanna make sure that you know about all of the extra resources that we have. And also we need your help. They say podcasts are free. You get to listen to podcasts for free. But what is the cost of that podcast? I would say if I could beg you to pay anything for that podcast, I would say the cost of the podcast is going and giving a review. So whether you download it on Google or Apple or YouTube or anywhere else, please go give us a review. Say what you liked, what you didn't like. It helps us get better guests. The more reviews, the higher we get in the rate rankings. Right now, we are the biggest podcast out there for real estate agents. And we want to keep that spot because we know there's lots of podcasts out there. So go give us a review. Also, be sure to go to hybendigital.com. If you liked any of the resources that those real estate agents talked about, we've got a huge video vault of those resources for free. Every penny that comes on the podcast that we interview, they give us something that helps them get their deals or helps them work with their clients. And we put that in the toolbox in our vault for you. So go to hybendigital.com and you can get it. If you're looking for real estate education, go to rebusuniversity.com. We have all sorts of courses in there to help agents succeed in real estate. How to get the listing, how to negotiate deals, you know, how to become an investor, all sorts of different stuff, rebusuniversity.com. And if you wanna chat with me, go find me on Instagram. If you come find me on Instagram, you can send me messages. Tell me what you wanna hear. Tell me what you liked, what you didn't like. We try to put a bunch of content out there too. You can find me in two different places. It's at rerockstars.com for our Real Estate Rockstars page or at erinamuchastegui.com for my personal Instagram page where I can chat with you about all sorts of different things. Thanks for listening. We'll see you again soon.